first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Greetings, greetings. Once again, we're back today. We're going to speak on the power of the mind and the science of breath. Man heal thyself. During the second hour, we will be having Queen of Four to come on in order to speak about her new um, lecture that she is doing, in which that she's going to speak on the family and man heal thyself. Um, before we get to that, um, we're going to break down the power of the mind and the science of breath. Now, there are four main regions in the brain, yet the skin itself is the first or outer brain, and melanin serves as the receiver or transmitter and conductor of this universal cosmic galactical stellar solar planetary energies. Okay? Most people are shallow breathers and breathe mainly from the upper chest region. We have lost the natural, spontaneous, whole body breathing that we used to experience as babies. If you look at the baby, the baby abdominal area goes up and down. All right? As young children, we breathe into various bodily spaces such as the head, um, the chest, the belly, the solar plexus, which is the diaphragm, um, the back, even the spine, in which that actually... What is attached there is um, what is called the pranic tube that extends from the um, perineum to the top of the head. What we need to be doing is full exhales and inhales, letting go and take it in. And almost possible when we are free enough to let go of the known and embrace the unknown. This is what this is symbolic to. All right? Um, when we fully exhale, we empty ourselves, not just of cosmic di- um, carbon dioxide, but also of old tensions, concepts, attitudes, expectations, and feelings. All right? When we, uh, when we full inhale, when we are fully inhaling, 
we renew ourselves, not just with new oxygen, but with prana, which is called chia ki, or ra. Also with this new impression of everything in and around us. Um, the seven stars, um, energy points, um, which is um, the seven stars is mentioned in uh, Revelation, that the, um, the Son of Man um, had in his right hand seven stars. Um, that is symbolic to the feet, the dantian, the hands, the solar plexus, the crown, the perineum, and the third eye. Those are the seven um, chakra points in which that, um, for example, when an individual is stressed out, they release chi and deplete wu chi, which is the original chi. Um, by bringing energy into those particular seven areas, um, you can store the energy specifically into your dantian or at the back of the heart or either at the third eye as we said before. So therefore, stop your activities and rebuild chi pressure by breathing into your dantian, um, which is a key to internal power and strength. Um, we gave the exercise um, in which that when you go to sleep, you can lay on your right side into the fetus position and your right hand underneath your um, head near your ear area and your left hand over or covering your dantian or your navel chakra. Okay? Now, the reason why we're going into this because um, me as a Moor and me being indigenous, um, I am Washita. Um, we do, there's certain information that we deal with, and being that I've sat with various teachers. Um, prince Ramesses Abu Bey, who was also known as Prince Hutan Tupac Bey, who was the crown prince of the um, Empire of Washington, D. Dr. Munya, given that title June 7th, 1999, by the Empress um, Vodiasi um, Tierra um, Tornico Washington Gaston L. Bey. There were certain sciences of healing on which that he taught me back in the mid nineties, as well as also um during that time I was reading and studying a book in which that I really was reading during the early nineties, um, by Grandmaster Sonyada Saraswati, whom I got a chance to actually be a student of and I am a member of the Shindao Monastery of the um energy healing arts in which that um, there were certain teachings or information which that he passed on to us in which that correlates specifically with the Holy Quran, Circle 7, in which that um, you read Chapter 11. Um, it speaks that, um, I think it's the 20th verse, it says, from Allah's own record, we read the triunal law breathed forth and stood seven spirits before his face. The Hebrew was called the seven spirits Elohim. Those are your seven chakras. Right? If you go to the Moorish um, questionnaire, the 101 and 102, um, it says, who is Elohim? Elohim is the seven creative spirits that create everything that, w that ever was, is, and ever more to be. What is Elohim sometimes called? The seven eyes of Allah. Once again, that is symbolic to the seven energy points, the seven churches or the seven chakras within one body. Um, the ancients referred to um, the ancient Tamarians or Tamarians or Kemites or Kemetans or Kamal um, referred to the seven bodies as the Kat, which was the physical body. Um, the ab, which is the inner heart or desire body, the emotional body, or what is called the higher astral body. Um, the cabot, which is the shadow body. Um, the sahu, which is the spiritual or mental body. Um, the ku, which is the causal body, which is the higher mental body. Um, 
the ka, which is the ethereal or the spiritual body, and the ba, which is the soul body. According to the ancients, the ku or the aku, the ka and the ba is what survives physical death. The kat, the ab, the sahu, the kaibit, those four dies. Those are what is referred to within the justice lesson, which is, um, I think, is 1 through 14 of the 120 of the Nation of Gods and Earths, in which that specifically states, why well, must Muhammad and any Muslim murder the devil? What's the duty of every Muslim is to bring forth four devils. Those four devils are talking about um, those four lower chakras, which is based on the attributes of lust, greed, jealousy, and hatred. When those four attributes of those four lower chakras are murdered, then the lower self can merge into the higher self. All right? When you read in the Moorish questionnaire 101 or 102, it speaks about the lower self and the higher self. It states there are two selves. It says name them. The lower self passes away. The higher self is our law and man. So that is the everlasting part, the immortal, the eternal, the forever part of oneself, which is actually the soul. All right? Um, you can get a book by Gerald Massey. It's called Gerald Massey Lectures in which that speaks about the seven souls of Ra, which is nothing more than the seven eyes of Allah, which is the seven Elohims or the seven Elo. All right? Now, interesting. There was another chapter in the Holy Quran, Circle 7, thanks to the 17th chapter, in which that speaks about, I think it's in the 36th verse, it says, in flesh of man, there is the essence of the resurrection of death. This essence quickened by the holy breath will raise the substance of the body to a higher tone. So, the breath raised the substance of the body to a higher tone. Whether you're in the body or out, that is what survives, is the breath. Um, it's been illustrated. Um, doctors, scientists have actually weighed the body of a person who was about to die. And at the point of death, there is 60 ounces approximately of weight that is missing. In other words, at the point of death, 60 ounces, the body weighs less than it did when it was alive. The difference between what we can obviously see of the vital body is that the breath is no longer, there is no longer inhaling and no longer an exhaling. That's the difference between living and dying. One who is alive, one who is dead is the breath. So that breath can be used while you are alive to raise the substance of the body to a higher tone. We must remember this because we know that the breath is very vital for all the functions of the body, for your muscles, for your skin, for um, the circulatory system, the lymphatic system, which is the lymphoids, which is the thymus gland, the liver, which has over 500 functions in the body, and etc. The brain functioning. The mind extends from the brain through via the spiritual eye, which is referred to as the third eye, which is the pineal gland. When you think... You actually think from the area, from the abode of your head, hence the kingdom or queen.
green dome, that dome, that dome piece. Okay. So, the question is asked um, in chapter 7, the friendship of Jesus and Lamas. Lamas asks, what do you say of power? And Jesus said, it is a manifest. It is the result of force. Is it but not? It is but illusion, nothing more. Force cannot, force change not, but power changes as the ether changes. Force is the will of Allah and is omnipotent. And power is that will and manifest directed by the breath. So, for those who want to be powerful, you must learn how to master the science of breath. This is the science. You must master the science of breath if you want to be powerful. We gave the illustration not too long ago that the breath extends the auric cell. Okay? There's two methods of breathing or breath control. You have the Buddhist and the Taoist. The Buddhist method use the belly focus. Your belly moves in and out when you inhale. This method moves chi energy up and down the body. It helps bring chi into your body from the crown and feet. Your feet feel light when you run. This method can be used for running and relax relaxing the body. Now, the Taoist method uses the chest focus. Your chest moves out when you inhale. This method moves chi into the bone marrow and out to the skin. It helps direct chi out of the body through the arms and legs. Your feet feel heavy, which is good for hitting and action. Chi is directed out of your arms at the ball. Um, um, at the ball, um, hit. In other words, um, if you're playing. Um, any type of sports, you can um, use the Taoist method um, in order to um, master the body from being hurt. Um, Karate experts, when they break slabs of wood, or bricks, or whatever the case is, or ice. Um, this is the method in which that they use. All right. So it is very important that as indigenous people that we understand, understand, understand that we are not born with um, also a so-called religion. For religions or cultural traditions based on the symbols that emerge from the subconscious and later transform into mythology and compared to the facts that each of us are born with a spiritual soul. All right? The spirituality is always real. However, religion can be fraudulent, at least in interpretation. So, um,. We must understand there's a difference between practical knowledge and rhetorical knowledge. A lot of people love knowledge, but a lot of it is rhetorical. It's not practical by any means. It's not teaching you how to heal. It's not teaching you to um, master oneself, the emotional body. It's not teaching you how to be able to move things with your mind to change um, events, which deals with high magic and low magic, which we'll get to that in a minute because that is also components of the mind. We must become less involved with doctrines and theologies and more connected with the underlying unifying spirit. 
which is at the core of all true religions and creeds. There are so many erroneous notions as to being um, spiritual. Many people believe being spiritual means being soft, turning the other cheek, walking around in sandals, or wearing long robes. This is the furthest from the truth. Spirit simply means breath. Breath is life. We breathe from the moment we are born. When the doctor spanked you behind, at that moment, you start to breathe. Your soul becomes activated. When you stop breathing, we die. Your soul leaves the body. The average human can go without food for about 30 days, 40 days, without water for about a week and a half, two weeks, but only about three to six minutes without the breath. Thus, spirit or breath is the most important of the three sustaining life factors. You do not only breathe in oxygen, as we said earlier, but also photonic energy, which is prana, Ra, chi, key energy. All right? We have to understand this. So there is only one God or a law or energy. Pata, Ra, um, Shekham, Shekmat, um, Shekina, Shati, Shiva, Tahuti, Yahweh, Yahuwah. All the various names, attributes within the various cultures and traditions that keeps taking on new shapes and forms, but it's the same energy. Every time the energy um, takes on a new form, a new name is given. Thus, the many names are attributes of God in the various languages and dialects of the world. The Kutalini Shakti transform into the different um, forms of prana, consciousness, at each chakra level. And at the crown, the Kundalini Shakti um, um, awakens um, Kundalini Shiva to produce the Kundalini Krishna. In other words, or set, resurrects, or saw, and they merge the divine marriage in heaven to produce Hero, the hero, the conqueror of the lower self, set. So through this process of manifesting, consciousness divides itself into two parts, dualistically in nature, at least it seems to be, until you merge them as one, hence a law, Ra. But it is known as the lower self and the higher self. And you do that through harmonizing the breath. All right? Now, a good example of that is actually found in the Holy Quran, Circle 7. It actually speaks about that. And I think it's Chapter 1. It says, man cannot die. The spirit man is one with a law. And while a law lives, man cannot die. When man has conquered every foe on the plane of soul, the seed will have full opened out, will have unfolded in the holy breath. The garb of the soul will then have served its purpose well, and man will need it never more. And it will pass and be no more, and man will then obtain unto the blessedness of perfectness, of perfectness, and be at one with a law. This is from the um, chapter one, which is the creation and the fall of man. But what is that talking about? That is talking about man fall into various states of consciousness in which that cause his apparent separation. He thinks that he's separate. He thinks that he is separate, but he really isn't. But he thinks that he is because he has debased himself and has separated himself from a law. So we know that um, we have the seven stages of consciousness in which that we've gone over. You have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. 
these levels are based upon the breath. The breath activates these various levels of consciousness, which is actually your chakras. For example, the 18 breaths in which that the person breathes on average activates the reptilian portion of the brain. At nine breaths, the limbic area of the brain. At 7.5 breaths, the cerebrum portion of the brain. At six breaths, the medulla oblongata. At 4.5 breaths, the pituitary gland. At three breaths, the pineal gland. And at one breath, all the portions of the gland of the brains are activated. Now, that's important because you've seen a movie called Limitless. It was that the character name was Moira, M-O-R-R-A, Moira. That was his last name. That's the name that they went, that he kept going by in the movie, that they kept calling him by. This is another extension of the Matrix movies. But in the movie, he took a pill in which that caused him to be able to use 100% usage of his brain. And until he mastered it, he had to keep taking this pill over and over and over again. And when he first took the pill, or was it first, the pill was handed to him, if you remember, go back and watch this movie, Limitless. The pill was clear, but the song in the background that was playing was called Blue Boy. Now, you remember the blue pill is the pill on which that Neo took in order to um, to get out the matrix and to expand his consciousness. This is the same thing in which that took place within this movie. All right? And the, and the craziness about the movie was is that he actually said, what you think this is, the matrix? <laughs> this is the matrix. So it was part of the matrix um, trilogy, but then, they, then again, it wasn't. It was a spin on it. But you have to go back and watch this movie. The guy said, you know, when the average person only uses about 20% of their brains, how would it feel if you use 100%? Well, actually, the average person doesn't use 20%. According to the scientists, they use 2 to 10% because of their conditioning and because of the dogma and because of the rhetorical information and things in which that they have suppressed themselves and embedded themselves into. We have done this to ourselves. Now, so this sort of man is also symbolic to us condensing within the flesh. Another thing from the um, Holy Quran, from Circle 7, it says within Chapter 2, it says the revealers of light. What is it that they must teach? It says, one, we must teach your sons and set the soul on fire with love and holy zeal and make them conscious of their missions to the sons of men. Two, teach them that Allah and man are one, but that their cardinal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah, debased himself. So this is how you fell from grace. You tore yourself away from Allah and debased yourself. In other words, you stopped breathing in deep breaths and became a shallow breather how we know because in 19 it says teach the whole teach that the holy breath will make them one again restoring harmony and peace teach that the holy breath will make them one again restoring harmony and peace this is what it said so this is what we have to um this information which that is ever so much around us 
we have to pay attention, really pay attention. So when we talk about the fall of man, we're really talking about the breath and how we have not been using it properly. So we go into those states of consciousness. Well, at that 18 breath, um, the person taps into the skin or the flesh. At nine breaths, they tap into the tissues and the muscles, blood and hormones. Um, 7.5 breaths, um, that's that, um, the plasma, um, the chemicals of the body. Six breaths, the cellular. At 4.5 breaths, the molecular structure. At three breaths, the atomic structure. And at one breath, the subatomic. So if you master the one breath technique, you would tap into your subatomic body. These are the things that we have to master. These are the things in which that we really need to know. All this rhetorical information is for naught. It isn't doing us any good. It's up giving us knowledge, but it don't have the keys in order to give us um, actual survival. If you notice, there's a lot of people that's been walking around with these oxygen um, machines here lately, tubes up their nose, respiratory illnesses and problems. And a lot of it is coming from the chemtrails that are being dropped. That's where it's coming from. All right? You inhale and exhale on an average of 25,920 times a day in a 24-hour period. Which coincide with the time of span of the sun called a great year. That it takes the sun to travel through the 12 zodiac signs up to the 12 constellations. When you start to lower your breath, you go above the zodiac. The zodiac will is called the will of destiny or the will of karma. So in order to go above karma or the cause and effect factor, you must learn how to breathe. I brought up earlier about the higher self, the lower self, and also brought up the science of the mind, which dealt with um, high magic and low magic. Um, I'll give you an illustration. Taoist, um, I would say, would be high magic, in which that would ultimately design to change the person, thus altering the manifest reality. Um, It involves the science of alchemy. High magic does not typically manifest things. It manifests changes within one's own inner reality, and thus changing the outer apparent reality. Okay? Um, Ron Neffer, our men, um, he stated that if you are not cultivating the manifesting, the unifying self-image of the Godhead within you, but instead you are cultivating and manifesting your persona, then you are a worshiper of a demigod in the nonsense of Western theology or the the, um, theologians. We should be cultivating the self-image of the Godhead within each and every one of us. In other words, tying ourselves back to our higher selves. There is a picture in ancient Kemet in which that shows Heru being tied um, with Set, 
they both were being tied together at this um they have ropes in their hands, but they're being tied to this particular pole. Um, that is symbolic to the Dejid, which would be the backbone of Osiris. Symbolically, that is your spinal column, the 33 vertebrates, in which that it takes for the energies to move from out of the lower self into the higher self, to merge the lower self with the higher self, to become one self which is Allah and man, and Allah and woman. When I say man, I'm not talking about gender. I'm talking about, per se, the mind. Because when you look up in Webster Dictionary, and you look up the word mind, and, or either you look, the, um, look up the word man, excuse me, you will find that the word man means the mind, or to think. All right? This goes back to um, Romans, the 8th chapter, the 8th through the 11th verse. It says, So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, then he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body dies because of sin, but the Spirit in life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead also giveth life to the mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. All right. Um, Corinthians, First Corinthians six nineteen through 20. This is not a Bible class, but I'm trying to show you examples. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you was bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Second Corinthians 6 through 16 through 18. For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk amongst them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, save the Lord Almighty. So all of this is part of that. All right? So this is what we should be doing is the high magic, which is changing self. Instead, we got a lot of people on the low magic. And not saying that it can't be used, but let's look at it. It's designed to change the apparent reality, the illusion, the matrix, through multiple method, methods. Typically, a low magical work or workings attempts to overpower existing manifestations and thus makes the desired manifestation happen. It's like jamming a um a radio or a TV station so that you can put your own signal on top of it. So low magic can be quite effective, but since it usually only um overpowers the normal manifest reality, it is at best temporary. Just like the lower self is. Remember, everything in the personality already is against the desired manifestation. Otherwise, it would exist without the need for additional work. So, we must understand the signs behind the higher self and the lower self. High magic, low magic, hero, set. They all correlate to the things in which that we need to be working on. Now, there's certain affirmations, being that we're dealing with the power of the mind, there's certain affirmations. Um, the ancient Kemetic or the ancient Tamarians or Kemites, Egyptians. Um, there's one in particular called Ra Netur, Ati Nafi, a Nefer. So Ra Netur, Atif Nefer. That means God's sun rays in nature are gracious to me. 
that is a match that is designed to draw towards the user the life-giving warmth of the sun and the protection power over the lower self. You can say this prior to doing your qigong, your tai chi, or your reiki, or your pranic healing, pranayama, kundalini yoga, whatever you want to do that deals with you drawing forth this cosmic energy of ra, or ur-ra, which is a law. That's the Arabic trans, transliteration of the ancient Kemetic teachings of the deity in which that was worshipped is the same deity, Ra. That's why you say Amen at the end of your prayers, whether you're Muslim or practice Al Islam or Christianity or Judaism. The so called three monotheistic belief systems all call upon Amen Ra or Ur Ra, which is Allah. Christians say Hallelujah. So these are just apparent things that we have to master and have to understand. Um, there's another one called Nuk Uab Ka Uab Ka Ka Uab Ba Ka Uab Shekel, which basically means my mind has pure thoughts, so my soul and life force are pure. This keeps one in tune with Mother Nature and the universe or the daughter, nature, and mother universe, as Sister Myra would say. Okay? There's another one in which that is on Pata, Shakir, or Saw, which means life, creation, death, and resurrection. This is a match for stimulating a profound protective force on all levels of human activity and help set into motion a process of transformation of the individual from human to superhuman. In other words, this helps with you developing your various gifts. For the Christians, it's referred to as the nine fruits of Christ within 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. This is all brought about through the science of breath and through the sounds of power. Hesis and what is called hakau, or what is referred to as uh, mantras or chants or dickers within Islam. All right, within Hebrew, if you chant Yahshua, being that Shu is the ancient Sumerian um, deity as well as also is the ancient... Um, Shu is also a form of Shiva, but is even Shu within the Tumerian um, or Kemetic or Egyptian teachings that Shu is the personification of air, which means the breath of life. So it's no coincidence that your Savior, called Jesus, whose Aramaic name is Yahshua, has the same derivative, the breath of life. So when in the Old Testament it says God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul, it's talking about that he breathed into the nostrils, Yahshua, and made man a living soul. Yahshua in Hebrew means, oh, my Savior is God. Or Yahweh is my salvation, which represents the unified being. Shu in the ancient Kemetan belief system, Shu was the son or the first begotten of Atum. In your Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus is called the second Adam, the begotten son. So these are the things that you have to understand is that the scriptures, whether it's the Bible or the Holy Quran, the Holy Bible or the Holy Quran, they both are derived from the book of coming forth by day and night, misnomer the book of the dead by um, E. Um, e. A. Wallace Budge. But we have a question in the chat room. I'm going to five two two two. Four by day and night, misnomer the book of the dead by. 
on PA Wireless Bites. You're on the air. Five two two two. Hello. Yes, greetings. Elaine, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh my goodness, Elaine! I'm gonna tell you, I am so happy to know that you started your own show. Um, oh, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling from Washington D.C., and I know you don't remember me, but I talked to you probably over a year ago. We had a really nice conversation. And um, I've been following your work, you know, occasionally when I see that you're you're on other shows. And um, I'm just, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about what I feel about your work and, and the information that you're putting out. So it was such a joy for me to go through Blog Talk and see that you had a show. And I said, okay, I see the topic. And I said, but this is the host. Aleem is actually the host. And I was like, wow, he started his own show. You know, what kind of kismet is that? So I just I just wanted to definitely just give all praise and, and just thanks that, that you've actually went and took the step, started your own show, because we really need to hear more of you. And you, and you have such a wealth of information, and you like sharing your information. So... This is just such a perfect venue for you to um, get the information out. So I'm just giving thanks to you for, um, you know, taking that step. Well, but I appreciate I did, Absolutely. I appreciate you. Um, I did have um, a question, actually a, a couple of quick questions. Um, I've been seeing uh, certain numbers all the time. And um, I'm not really I've, – I've looked up the meaning on Google, like what does the number 88 or the number 44 mean, and I'm not exactly satisfied with the information that I'm getting from that. So I kind of wanted to have an occult or metaphysical uh, explanation uh, for these numbers, but I keep seeing the sequence of 888 or 444 four, four, all the time. It could be something like if I'm getting up and in the middle of the night go to the bathroom, I might look at the clock and it's 444. Or, you know, I might be on a computer and I'll just see 444 or, you know, or see the 888 combination. And I'll see 911 sometime or 711. I'm just seeing or I'm seeing like master numbers. And I just wanted to know, what what do these numbers mean? All right, well, 888 from the Kabbalah. Um, if you get the book 777 by Alice Crowley Writings, um, 888 actually is the numeral for, or Geomantria, which is from the Kabbalah for Christ. Okay. Now, Christ is your consciousness when it has been exalted to the pineal gland. And it resonates out from the third eye area. So um, that 888 symbolizes the awakening of the third eye, of that spiritual eye. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously is what is going on with you because that's why you're seeing the numbers. Because it is showing you something that is taking place within yourself. Okay. Now, now four, what four, about four, the... Mm-hmm. 444 is the number for the activation of the navel chakra which I referred to earlier as the Dan Tien, which actually is where you store this prana or chi or ki or ra energy at. Every breath that you take in, you store it within your body at that area. At least that's where it's supposed to be stored at. Mm-hmm. If you want longevity, then you will store the energy there at your Dan Tien or at your navel chakra. If you want um, love, then you would store it at the back of the heart. If you want intelligence, a high IQ, then you would store it at the third eye. Okay. But now, that's what, what that would just... oh, four, 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 symbolic to you absorbing energy and storing it within your navel chakra for longevity. Okay. Now, what if you just see it as a double digit, like just 44 or just 88? All right, 44 Is it the same and 88. Thing? Those, those are master numbers in which that symbolizes high um, psychic activities and abilities. 44 is 33 and 11 combined, which, of course, those two symbolize 
master numbers. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, um, like what we were saying with the 444, the angels are surrounding you now, reassuring you of the love and help. Um, basically, it was saying, so don't worry because the angel help is nearby. That's why 444 is symbolic too. Um, 44, like I said, will go back to um, psychic abilities and to um, um, a master number. All right? Um, 888 um, is a phase of your life. Um, also, is symbolic to a phase of your life that is about um, to end. This is a sign that is given um, to you as a forewarning to prepare. This um, number sequence may mean you're winding up um, an emotional career or relationship phase. Um, it also means that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, like I said, there's also, um, now these are just the occult meanings, you know, but, you know, like I said, 888 is the manifestation of the third eye principle. So, um, those are the, that's the way in which that I've been able to break it down based on Geomantria and the Kabbalah. Okay, because I saw the other ones that you just mentioned, you know, the 444. I read all those on Google where they said the angels are surrounding you and the 888, you know, is that it's going to be a transformation. I talk a lot to Sister Myra. We we um, talk a lot over the phone because we find that we have some synchronicities with a couple of things. And uh, one of the things that, that she and I talk a lot about is about the twin soul um uh, twin soulmate process that's coming about, and right. I have been tussling about whether it was um, more of an alchemical process that's going on in everyone where they're kind of uh, reuniting with their feminine masculine half within themselves or whether this is an external process where you're actually meeting your actual physical twin soul that's coming into your life and she said in in january the portal was open and so um there are a lot of things going on cosmically especially planetary when you look at where saturn jupiter uh, pluto uranus and how we're in gemini uh right now with the communication and the twin soul process and a lot of relationships are being shaken or uh you're having to to kind of reevaluate your relationships now um, but she has stated that that is a twin soul process. So when I look at the 88 and 44 and I see the 222 two, two sometimes, I'll get uh, I'll see the time or see something that's 222 in the afternoon. And, um, and so I'm just tying that in, too. I'm definitely seeing that I am making a spiritual shift with myself but what do you think about the twin soul process that's taking place? Is it? Do you think it's an internal thing, uh, alchemical process? Well, it could actually be both an alchemical process inside as well as right. well, the alchemical process first or the internal process first, and then whatever it is inside of you is what shows forth externally. So it's a process that has to begin first internally, and, of course, like we said, 888, that is symbolic to the third eye, in which that would symbolize also the androgynous spirit of unifying the masculine and feminine um, qualities of oneself. Mm -hmm. But would that be an external person, too? It can be. I wouldn't necessarily say that it is, but but at least through the um, unifying within oneself, that... Um, twin flame or that other person can't be bought based on um, the unifying process in which that has occurred within. I got you. Uh, my final thing is, what's, what can we expect with these eclipses that are going on? Well, these various eclipses are correlating to the solar flag activity in which that's been taking place since February the 14th, in which that um, they're getting stronger and um, might get as, strong, get as strong as super flares and mega flares in which that um, these flares has been bombarding the planet Earth, um, you know, and this activity is causing genetic mutations or bursts of genetic mutations within our DNA. And um, we are um, mutating, you know, for the better. We're changing from Homo sapiens sapiens to Homo crystals, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, as the Earth graduates, 
um, moving from the third, fourth dimension, eventually into the fifth dimension. We're making that jump board, so. Okay. What book can you suggest for me on breathing? Um, The breathing technique in which that we would recommend is the pranic breathing. This is what we've been telling people now for the um for a couple of weeks is that they need to master the pranic breathing in which that um there's two methods particularly in which that is seven one seven one. You would breathe in for a count of seven, hold it for one count, breathe out for a count of seven, hold it for one count, and start the cycle over again. And you would do that one hundred times a day or you can do the six three six three breath in which that you would breathe in for a count of six, hold it for three, breathe out for a count of six, hold it for three, and do that one hundred times or more so. So, um, whichever one it was that you choose to use, what that is doing is expanding your auric field and magnetizing it and strengthening you so that as these things start to take place upon planet Earth based on this um, alignment, this galactical alignment that is um, going to occur December 21st, 2012, um, this is based on consciousness. This isn't um, an end, as we would say, of the world. This is and of a particular consciousness and us enter into another state of consciousness. The third dimension is based on length, width, and height. The fourth dimension is based on depth, in which that you would, um, which is time and space. The fifth dimension is based on energy. We're moving from um, apparently third dimensional reality or apparent reality. Um, as we go through the dark rift, we're entering the fourth dimension, and as we come out the dark rift, we're going to go into the fifth dimension. Um, all of this is supposed to occur between now and um, December the 21st, 2012. So the Mayans, or better yet, the Omex, was actually referring to a change of consciousness. In other words, we're being upgraded. Are the white people being upgraded as well? Um, if they make it their choice to be. Okay. Now, what book would you suggest for breathing, though? Um, I get the, the technique. Is there an actual book? The Science of Breath by Yogi Ramachakra. The Science of Breath? Yes, The Science okay. of Breath by Yogi Ramachakra. Okay. Also, Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Aleem? Yes, I'm here. Did you say also? Yeah, I was saying also there's another one called The Science of Pranayama. Okay. Which pranayama means um, breath control. Okay. Well, thank you so very much, Aleem. I'm so happy to see that you're on Blog Talk, and um, you have a loyal listener in me. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. And support. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you, okay. sister. Okay. Take care. Peace to you and your family. Thank you. All right, we have caller 0233, ending in 0233. You're on the air. You're on the air. Peace, Islam, brother. Peace, Islam. Islam. This is Noble Cooper Saleem. From out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes, greetings, brother. How you um, doing? How you doing, brother? I was asking you about um, my activities I've been having with in terms of my body, where I'm able to, um, I'm seeing, like, in dual dimensions while I'm still breathing and walking. I'm able to see other things other than what this outside of the matrix. But when it happens, brother. I, it seems like I'm having a panic attack, so I have to sit. It kind of like I have to sit and and collect myself. It's like my heart speeds up, but it's not a heart attack. It's as if I'm it's like I'm at as if I'm in two places at one time because I always encounter somebody that say they see me in another part, and I'm like, nah, 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 brother. I oh, oh, I never been there before. But it's like, no, brother, I've seen you, but it's actually like I'm. I see dual dimensions within, in, in this, even though we know it's a matrix, I actually see beyond this um, matter that we're seeing. Things that appear to be real, I am now noticing that it's not real. So what, and in that, in, in that answer, what 
kind of technique to meet or breathing I need to do to prepare myself for the cosmic change, being that my birthday is January the 16th, I am a cardinal sign, so I am a spiritual receiver. My question, brothers, what do I need to do in breathing techniques to prepare myself when I enter into those kind of things? Well, you have to learn how to ground the energy. Um, your body mm-hmm. is a battery, and um, the energy is being stored into the various areas of your body, in which that is um, being able to cause you to be um, bipolar, as we would say, spiritually. Um, so you have the ability in order to do what's called paradigm shift, um, to move in between worlds. Now, what you have to do is ground yourself so that you can be able to use utilize those energies properly and use it at your will and not at the beckoning call of the energies themselves. Um, so you just learn that through what is called breath control, in which that um, one of the techniques that you can do is to um, sit in a um, chair with your back straight, feet shoulder width apart, your hands on your knees, balled up into a fist, and you're going to breathe in for a count of five and out for a count of ten. And that will begin to start grounding you. All right? And then you can also do a Qigong move in which that um, you can take your hands and flare them out over top of your head and connect your middle fingers and bring them down in front of you. Now, your body is going to be um, in the Qigong position with your feet shoulder width apart, pelvis, Mm-hmm. Um, area tilted slightly forward, knee slightly bent, um, head um, lowered, you know, chin tuck a little bit, and you'll just take your hands and flare them out to over the top of your head with palms down and bring your hands down in front of you, down the front of your body till you get down to your navel chakra. And you're going to do that um, three times. And that is a grounding exercise that you can learn how to do. Okay. Your whole thing is about the science of grounding so that you can master those energies, brother. Okay, and one more question for you. Um now when I'm in those when I'm in the dual dimensions, I've already I, I encounter myself being in the midst of um I suppose they're my they have to be my ancestors because they 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 kinda in they keep me in a and like in a in a in a, a three hundred and sixty degree circle, they keep me in the middle and they always they always it's like I'm in the midst of elements. That's why I was asking you about grounding myself because it's like whenever I get into a dual dimension, I always go into the dimension with elements. Like ancestors are uh, each ancestor, as you were speaking before about a different body parts represent said hey rule. It's it's like I'm in the middle of a a cipher, but it's like these energies, that's the reason why I asked you, if there's something with my birth date, the reason why I'm being shifted to the, um, the these dimensions like this, if it's, if it's something with my birth date or something, because every time I go into these, into this other dimension, my birth date number appears 116-1976, January. It always appears, but it appears in numbers. So I was trying to see if that's, something that I need to study with those numbers and numerology to see more about what those numbers are doing because every time I come into this realm, those numbers always appear. It's like it does not appear. I, I don't go into these uh, these dual dimensions until whenever the numbers appear, that's when I enter into a, a dual dimension, rather by going from my uh, sleep stage, which we know we're in a sleep stage. When I go to a wake stage, I, these numbers appear, so I was asking you if there's anything con- connected with those numbers, the reason why I'm being shifted to be able to do a dimension, go into dimensions while in this matrix realm. Well, I think that they um grooming you, Ock, and um, they're preparing you in order to be one of the um, um, receivers of um, this galactical um, planetary information. So they're training you, they're instructing you. It's an initiation. You know, the symbol of the circle represents 
360 degrees and being in a circle symbolizes spiritual knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know? So um, that's what we can gather from that is that um, this grooming is um, something in which that um, you will soon be um, telling all of us about, you know, because um, it seems as if you're being initiated on the astral plane. And a lot of us have been initiated um, not physically, you know what I'm saying? In other words, not depending upon um, a Masonic initiation or um, or a group initiation, you know, whether it's in college, going through the fraternities or whatever else, or sororities or whatever else in which that we think that initiation take place. There's also spiritual initiations in which that the ancestors um, groom us in order to um, become the bearers, um, the light bearers or the revealers of light. And that's what you're going through right now. I, I give thanks for that because I always used to ask myself, you know what I mean? What I always always say, well, ancestors, what you have me to do? Because it's like, brother, whatever I try to apply for these just over broke jobs, or I um, am seeking to get this debt note, it seems like the ancestors don't. It's like they, I get in a position that they cut automatically, and then something comes in, they're like, that's not your, that's not what we have for you. This right. is what you have with you, you know what I mean? Then I get frustrated with myself, but like with ancestors, like our kids, they were like, don't worry about that. You need to take what we're giving you. That's when the sister Myra L was telling me that I just need to worry about being doing what the ancestors want me to do, go through initiation. Because I told her my heart, like it'd be racing. She's like, well, it's not a heart attack. She's like, you being, like you said, I'm glad, and that's peace to me to know that, that I'm not having a heart attack. It's just... She was like, when you go through dimensions like that, your your heart rate is like it speeds up and then it slows down. And I can feel me, a breath come out of me, but it's like I get kind of dizzy kind of lo- a little bit when the breath comes out. And then when the breath comes out, I'm able to see other things. And when the breath comes back in, I'll sweat. I'll get sometimes, but I'll lay and I'll go into a sweat stage. Right. But I'll be fine, but I'll be fine. But it's like my body is just, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get aware with the, the transformation I'm going through. Like you said, the, the eclipse is going to cause people to change solar. And I was just saying that earlier today to the queen that it, there's going to be a, a change cosmically. So I appreciate that. So, again, you said I have to take five breaths inwards and count right. ten times outward. Right. You would breathe in for a count of five and, and um, breathe out for a count of ten. And you would do that consecutively for about 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. All, All right. right. Um, Prince Ali, right. in peace. And I'm I'm around you, brother. I'm right here in North Carolina. You're not um, – I'm on the other side of North Carolina. So All right. I'm right around you. I'm trying to visit your area so I can get some more studies going. Islam. All right. Okay. Good, brother. Islam. We have caller from zero six one eight. Um, I believe this is um Queen of Four. Are you there? I am here. Greetings. How you doing? Um, all is well. Thank you so much. All right. And with yourself. Oh, we doing well. We doing well. Appreciate you. Um, appreciate you Thanks. coming on. Um, um, I know that you want to build on um the family and um. Man, no, um, man, heal thyself. Um, you have an upcoming lecture um, this coming Sunday, right? Um, June nineteenth, um, in yes. Harlem at the um, yes. National Black Theater. National Black Theater at twenty thirty three Fifth Avenue on one hundred and twenty fifth Street, and it will be this Sunday, June the nineteenth. This is it's time to heal the family, and we are lifting up our men. Uh, man, heal thyself. Wellness day for fathers and grandfathers and all the men, uh, yeah, our sons. That we're lifting them up in wellness on that day. And this is um, uh, produced by King Simon. Uh, we are we're working together, partnering on the upliftment of our men. And we are d- definitely asking that the women take full part, come center stage in uplifting, charging and helping our men to recover and to walk into a lifestyle of wholeness, to remove isfit, confusion, pain, dis-ease out of their body temples so we will have whole families. Um, and on indeed. that day, 
um, I will be sharing a, a document, and what and I'm sharing this document. The name of it is "Man, Heal Thyself Wellness Scroll," and the scroll was put into effect because once Sacred Woman, when I wrote the book Sacred Woman in 2000, um, the men started to look up and say, "You know, what about me?" And my response was, "This is a, a rites of passage book, and actually, women teach the women rites of passage." And, and men teach the men rights of passage. But then um, I would also say Heal Thyself, uh, my first book, and The City of Wellness was written for the entire family. But then last year I came out with another book, Overcoming an Angry Vagina, Journey to Women Wellness, and the men just started just coming into class and said, okay, she's not writing specifically to me, to me so I'm going to just come in. And I had been over the years, um, gathering, and so I have gathered um, the work, and this scroll it opens up with this prayer, and these and the prayers are throughout the the um, scroll, and it's based on the anatomy of man, uh, the um, metaphysical dis- causation connection to the disease, the herbal compound, and so twenty one body members that I'm addressing. It's the nature cures. It's the antiquity affirmations given to us from our, my, our eldest ancestors. And this was the this is the opening prayer that opens the way. May I open my two eyes which are blind. May I stretch out my feet which are fastened together. May my legs raise up for myself. I know my heart. I have gained power over my heart. I have gained power over my two hands and arms. I have gained power over my feet. I have gained power to do what pleases my soul. May my soul and my body not be imprisoned. May I come forth in peace, Hotep. And so this scroll is um, a way that one a man will be able to walk a path of wholeness and whatever the dis-ease it may be. And what I see as we get older, we should get wiser, but our body members should not fall apart. We should just become more brilliant, more intelligent, with more knowledge. But as we get older, the pain starts to kick in, into the bones, and the vision starts to become impaired, and the hair we begin to lose, and the depression begins to build from all the relationships that are unresolved and have not been healed up, and the numbing begins to take place in hands and feet. And as the years go on, we accumulate more stress, and the back pain comes in, and the shortness of breath, and the shortness of our stride, our men, and the constipation that leads to impotency in the prostate, and the kidneys that are failing, and the swelling that accompanies it, and the sclerosis of the liver, and the waterlogged legs, and the hurt and pain in the legs and feet that leads to canes by the time one is 45 or so. And then the diabetes, which then impairs the body further. And so I, in nature, nature provides answers for all of our ills. So in repairing the man, there's a system, uh, a, a method of doing it, and I put it in the scroll. Now, on that day, I will be sharing the scroll, introducing our men to this body of work. But on that day, we will also have a panel of young fathers. And that's a panel. There will be three gentlemen, and they will, brothers, and they will be speaking from their their position as fathers who did not have all the wisdom, and fathers who were challenged, but of areas that they have been able to overcome in spite of. And they will be speaking from the panel of promise. These are the panel of promise. And we have um, later on in the afternoon, we'll have the elder fathers speak, the the ones who have had the mistakes or had the breakdown and had to build up and had to grow from the experience and now have the wisdom. And that's the panel of the wisdom. And we will also have throughout the day healing tonics served to our men. I have wellness formulas. It's a 21-day detox kit. And I'll be sharing, and they'll be served by holistic, the holistic medicine women and the immigrant practitioners that I've trained over the years. And they will serve the Man Heal Thyself herbal formula for the prostate. And they will be served the men the master herbal formula to break the addictions of drugs or alcohol or dead foods or flesh. 
and they will be served their Green Life Nutritional Formula to help to increase memory and stamina. And they'll be served a clay and breath of life formula for those who are suffering from bronchitis and asthma and allergies. So by the time they leave that space, they would would, would have taken the first step to wellness or realigned themselves if they fell off for whatever reason. And then there'll be massage therapists there that will be able to give treatment while the program is going on simultaneously. And then the first 25 men that come in, they'll receive um, holistic tune-ups to get receive information on some specific things they can do upon leaving the event. We'll also have a green juice bar. Um, our sister Tandy will be providing, um, selling the green juices to help to boost up the immune system. Whether we have STDs on men, or if our men have high blood pressure or angry or hearts that are broken, if they will saturate their cells and tissues with the life force of live greens, they can overcome. And so we're going to put things in place for men to take the journey. So that day we'll also be um, celebrating and acknowledging the um, the ones who are in the front line of that I've watched who were there for the Million Men March and supported that, the Million Men Coming Together. And then also the ones that I will call out, they also have been there over the years providing wellness for our community, particularly the community of men. Uh, One such is Bob Law. Another such will be awarded for being the champions of wellness would be Frederica Bay and Diana Farr. And throughout that day we will call forth the women to come up and and say, I will stand for the men in the community. I was on, a, on another show today, and one brother said that the men have been neglected or felt neglected. See, women, we have a, we always call each other if we have pain, and we get a chance to cry, and we're told it's fine for us to cry. And men have said, you know, you know, toughen up, you know, handle it, handle your business. And as a result, they break down, they leave us early. And so you have women in their 50s and 60s, have, they cling together because there are no more men available in their family line. Um, they have died off. And I say it's not necessary that we can overcome and that they don't have to feel neglected. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing it because the time has come. I've been doing this work for 40 years, and an ancient um, Kemet, they say, once you have put your 40 years in, you become a master of what you do. And I'm bringing my portion. Of course, when you bring your portion, there are others that have a portion to bring. I'm bringing my portion. And this is, from what I know, that can work to shift. And from this, we then open up our homes as wellness clinics, um, healing sanctuaries, where the women continue to heal because the women have been healing me for years. And one of their complaints is that the men are not taking it on. And even when we have wellness circles and health programs, there are a few men, and there's always a lot of women, and their husbands and them, they're disconnected. Um, and then women who are looking for really wonderful men who would heal themselves and take care of themselves, they can't find them. But that day they'll be there, and families will heal. And even those couples who are in a sense of, in a state of strife, maybe if you come that day, that you will get some answers, and that will begin to heal your family because our children are in dire need for us to come together in unity. Um, so that day we focus on the men and lift them all the way up in, in, so, in nurturing and in care and love in a way that I, maybe it hasn't been done before, but hopefully, prayerfully, I believe it is time that others will see and bear witness to this auspicious day and they will begin to create the same atmosphere of wellness for our men. Well, it is definitely time. Um, I'm glad that you're definitely putting this together. Can you please give um, the audience one more time um, uh, where it's going to be held at? Yes. This is National Black Theater, and this is on uh, 2033 Fifth Avenue on 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Dr. Barbara Ann Tier. This is a space that she put together for our community. She's an ans- our ancestor now, and this is the type. This is why she built that structure for us. It is the largest real estate 
uh, black-owned, African-owned real estate in Harlem. And so that will be on this Sunday coming up for Father's Day in honor of fathers, uncles, brothers, grandfathers, building them up, which is building us up as women. This is their time. This is the time for them to get the strengthening. And so the number four uh, to reach out to King Simon is 347 Four nine six ten twenty two. King Simon is a, uh, a organizer. He's a master organizer and a survivalist teacher. So I'm very pleased to work with him and um, that we partner in this this uh, work. Uh, for those who need to reach out to me, you can call me directly at seven one eight two two one four three two five. You can also check the website. My website is www. Queen Afua, A F U A dot com. Okay. Um, can you give out King Simon's number one more time and your number to make sure everyone has that? Sure. It's King Simon, 347 496 1022. And my number is 718 221 4325. Or okay. one heal H E A L. Okay. Um, we have some questions here. Um, are you up for some questions? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, we gonna go to the um, board, and we got number one six five five ending in one six five five. You are now on the air. One six five five. You are now on the air. Right. We gonna go to five four zero seven. Five four zero seven. Yes. I'm here. All right. Yes. You have a question for Queen of Four? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, basically, I just come in. I want to get a little bit more information and a little more detail about what she's speaking about because I just come in on the conversation, man, and I really don't want to say nothing, you know, without knowing exactly fully what we're dealing with here today. Right. Well, she's dealing with the family and man heals thyself, an event in which that um, she is doing this coming Sunday, um, June the 19th, at the National Black Theater in Harlem um, on Fifth Avenue at 125th Street. Um in conjunction with Brother King Simon, is about healing the family and man, know thyself. It's a scroll in which that she's getting ready to do and which that she has put together um, for the brothers, you know. Okay. Well, um, so if there's any questions, you can ask her right now, you know. Um, we're going to go to 0801, question, 0801. Call it zero eight zero one. You're on the air. Zero eight zero one. Yes, hello. Yes, Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. All right. Peace, Miss Queen of Four. Um, I'm a Welcome. young sister, and, and um, I just want to let you know that um. Like, I totally, like, agree with your sermon that you're going to um, be teaching, like, as far as dealing with the um, the brothers and the fathers and the young fathers and, you know, even the grandfathers to let them know that they're not being, um, you know, left out. And it's all about unity. And um, I've just been following and reading your um, your sacred woman book for a long time, and it's really helped me. By me being a young woman, it's really helped me a lot in my life and really understanding as well as overstanding myself and, you know, my things, my environment, things surrounding me. So I just wanted to big up on that for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And, um, and well, that is what why this had to happen. Um, and I even though looking at Man Heal Thyself Wellness Scroll, that some of the women may say, even after reading Sacred Woman and having the book Overcoming, they may say to me, well, where's my scroll? 
And I will say, go to Sacred Woman and read 500 pages. The whole book is there for you. Mm-hmm. You've had it. So well, now I, be activated. And so I'm grateful you that know, you so are already activated to this work. And you can complement now with this document your mate, yourself, your elders, your fathers. You can have it. could be more complemented by working together. And because women actually okay. had like a, they've been doing, many women have been doing this work for years, and there are many holistic brothers and many well brothers and um, that are living this lifestyle and teaching this lifestyle. But of course, we are out at a we're health, at a health disparity, and we have the highest incidence of uh, men and women. But now it's the focus on the men, diabetes and premature death and uh, depression and um, heart mm-hmm. attacks prostate impotency that there needs to we we all have to actually get in there and do more work to uplift our men. Mm-hmm. And and that's what mm-hmm. we're gonna do as women because that day I'm gonna call forth the women and now we we and so this is a call out to all of us everywhere. So there's some that will not be in New York and wherever you may be, let's on it be a day of wellness for our men. Prepare them a whole mm-hmm. meal. You know, a lot a salad and and, and greens and um, ve- vegan vegetarian um, proteins and give them some herb teas for cleansing their liver. Um, give them their dandelion mm-hmm. for the iron. Give them the bilberry to strengthen their heart. Give them the um, the corn silk for their bladder and the soft pimento berries for the prostate. Give them their teas and run them a bath um, and put the salt mm-hmm. in or the an apple cider vinegar bath if they have high blood pressure. Let that day be a day of healing, hands-on healing. Massage their feet and massage their hands and really start to help them to get involved in the wellness because if you can give it to them lovely and sweetly and kindly with mercy and compassion, they'll give it right back. They'll give it right back. So it will create a balance and that kind of healing will open the heart. Uh, you know, in, in the family. So I think if you're being a sacred woman already and you're already in the text, you understand about the helping and the serving. That's and the well. Like, I wish like, I could even come to your, your, I wish I could even be there. Like, well, I'm in North Carolina, and I wish you could come here so I could just be there. <laughs> well, really you know, that, that one is I've been hearing as I've been on um, quite a few radio stations that people are, are saying that they would like to see that. So I, I think that it's all possible. If there's enough, you know, that critical mass, if enough of us want this to happen in the town, then it can happen. But that's why I say, but where you are started, call up family and friends and let all the men come together and and prepare food for them at the same time, whole foods, green foods, green juices. Do Make a day of it. A full day of of nurturing them and to pray for them and put women put hands healing. There is a prayer our ancestors gave us. I am the woman who lightens the darkness. I've come mm-hmm. to lighten the darkness. It's lightened. I am there for those who weep, who hide their faces, who sunk down. They looked upon us then. I am a woman. That is who we are as in our natural state. And you give that to them. Mm-hmm. And this scroll, though, you can get the scroll, and you will be able to help you and your mate go through it. And we're telling the man in his face that my face is of raw. His face is of raw, the light. The ancestors gave us those words. And in his cleansing, may he remove the defects and cut away the corruptible matter. And may the enemies, the inner enemies, be given to the fire. May he burn away the toxicity through soul sweats and hot baths and, and ginger tea. And may, um, he, may, may, may he grant, may the, may the opening of the way come. And may his heart become as pure um, as a lotus blossom. For the original man, he was not a bastard. He was not an evil man. He was not a dog. His, he was left for a tomb. He was a lotus man. And that represents one who is divine and who is illuminated. And we are lotus women as well. And so that let, and, cause out, and where did the lotus concept come from? Out of the mud, our ancestors said, out of the mud of of challenges and, and pain and strife, you get a chance to wash that the, 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 the seed is in the mud. It's a lotus seed. That's him. And so that seed has is, is, is already been planted even before he was born through his mother's womb and his father's loins. And so 
in the soil, the stuff that we think is the worst, that's sometimes the thing that forces us to come up out of the madness. So it comes out of that mud of strife and challenge, and it becomes nourishment as he goes through the chute and he begins to come through the water, and the waters are washing. All this work that I'm sharing um, for man, heal thyself, the scroll, is a washing and a cleansing and a purging mm-hmm. and a renewal because what ages our men is because they get hurt and they don't say it out loud, but it shows up in maybe trying to take something to numb it, maybe alcohol, maybe drugs. It's just hurt feelings, hearts broken, you know, and all of that rage. Our men are filling up the prisons. We better do something. You know, we got to do, we got to get involved. Um, and my sons uh, actually propelled this. And it, it, one, um, a, a pastor came to me after sending 56 women to study with me, sacred women. We did an intensive. And those 56 women are the women who run the church. And after they came from the training, they went back into their church. And the church, everything changed in the church. The, the, the oneness, the harmony, the caddy stuff stopped. It just started to shift. The women started to have a glow. And the same pastor came to me a year later. He said, do you have something for the men from your perspective? Do you have something for the men? And I said, I just looked at him and I just was, I said, I, I I went into prayer. I was in silence. I didn't know what to say. But over time, I, I asked myself, do I have something for the men? And so I come with this uh, as a way as to unify all the men, no matter their spiritual house. Because the second woman was. second woman was about unifying all the women, no matter their spiritual house. And so they was able to grow from the this knowledge. But this, I had to even be prepared for this. I had to do a lot of cleansing myself, a lot of fasting and purifying to understand what the ancestors are telling us. Mm-hmm. You know, as we heal ourselves, we all have the same gift. We just have to clean up and rebuild. This is a pet. This is a plan in order to do that. All right, we have another question, 7277. You are now on the air. Blessing. 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 One love. One love. One love. This is um, Lit Safari Mankanen out of Miami, Florida, you know, Washita. Uh I was just listening to the talk show, and I uh, appreciate I came in in the right, in the right time. Yeah, I was talking about cleansings and um, all the spirituality that we need to establish and unify the people and help our community. Well, that's that's what I've been doing with a spiritual vibe through my life. I was fasting every year so I could see the work and what our ancestors want us to do. So it's just a positive vibe. How this talk show is making me feel that it's, the work is, is here and it's still going on, and we got to unify the youth, and that's my job and my duty. And uh, I always continue doing it and trying to establish the brothers to walk in a proper manner here. Because just like the sisters say, they have to cleanse and it's just, uh, it's just natural that some people just go a different direction, and we just got to bring them back to the roots, you know? So I'm so happy Indeed. and blessed. I didn't hear the whole talk show. I just heard that section, so it was enough for me to just buy with it and give you my little feeling in my heart, my spirituality towards that section of the talk show. Yeah, thank you. Most definitely. Many blessings to you and your continued work. Yes, most definitely. And that's, that's what I want to do in my life, you know, just keep doing that work because... Uh, I see what it was uh, to shift different directions and not get no, no no blessings out of it. So by doing the right thing, I feel I'm I'm more blessed, and more spiritual, and more more in tune with nature, you know, and with people. I have people come to me and tell me how 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 my energy is without me knowing them from nowhere. So so people could see the mark of the Almighty in you, you know. Indeed. They could see the work, you know. Indeed. Yeah, Good thanks. Blessings. Long life. Blessings. Point 
Sophia? I'm right here. Okay. Um, can you please give out the um, information again? Yes, indeed. It's the day National Black Theater will be the day, it will be the location at 2033 Fifth Avenue, and it's, it's time to heal the family, and we are upholding and strengthening, fortifying man, our men, heal thyself on that day. This is this Sunday, June the 19th, 2011. Um, if you are close enough to get on a plane, <laughs> to get on a, uh, to get on a, you know, a carpool, um, to get on the train, to please come. If you are far or from this, from that location um, in Harlem, then make that day a day that you can still activate and we can begin together unified. We'll be working together um, from 3 to 7, so you can start with us from 3 to 7 and make it a day of wellness, a day of healing for the entire family. I've, in the early days when the book Heal Thyself came out, I put a chapter in of specifically some ways in which to help to restore the family, things that you can have. You have a wellness day. Every week the family should have a wellness day where they do activate, where they do work together because our families are disjointed. Even when we eat our meals together, we don't eat our meals together many times. One will be in the kitchen and someone else will be in their bedroom and someone else will be in the living room wherever the TV is, where that's where we're living, and we're living in front of our computers, and we're not coming together. And so we wonder how come these emergencies keep coming up in our families and, and how come all of a sudden we get a phone call and it turns your family upside down because we're not in communication. And when we are also polluted with all the fast foods and the processed foods, then we get further pulled out away from our center of power. So we invite everyone in some way to take part in this day, this Sunday, Father's Day, um, June the 19th. And from that Father's Day, every day, Father's Day, like every day, Mother's Day. And then let's build you up, build yourself up. Um, again, 2033 Fifth Avenue, Harlem, New York. The call number is 347-496-1022. Reaching out to King Simon Productions, um, stopplaying.org. And Queen of Four, you can reach me at 718-221-4325 or www.queenoffour.com. And, you know, it doesn't stop on that day because a sister called me from California. She said, so after that day, then what happens? Do they have the scroll? They are inspired? And do they, I mean, where do they go from here? We all need support. Otherwise, it becomes mental. You know how we read a book? We take a workshop, and it felt really good, but we have not activated. So the Spirit gave to me to 14 days prepare for the journey. And this is this can be done long distance. So those long distance brothers who want to take part, what I'm about to say, we've had a great success in our last in my last training, holistic medicine women training, um, and we had 20 women who came in face to face in New Jersey at the time I was teaching for 12 weeks. And we had um, another ten women who was on the phone, and we had they were part of the, the training, and it was a teleconference training. So those men who are all around the globe, in different cities, boroughs, towns, countries, they can join us on this next level. After that day, we'll be having orientation. Um, you can call and we'll give you a call number for orientation, and you'll be in the room. I'll be in Harlem giving orientation the following Wednesday, two Wednesdays. And that will give the some 14 days to prepare, or the seven days to prepare, depending on when they when they start. And those 14 pieces, other than the 14 pieces um, that have been cut up, um, broken apart in a saw, the King Man. And we're going to gather those members together on this walk. And then on two weeks from that point, we will have our Man Heal Thyself 21 day. I'm sorry, 28 day detox and rejuvenation program. And a brother asked me, I just did a yoga and raw food um, expo I was presenting this weekend, and he came to my booth after the presentation. He said, so you're going to do this uh, 28-day man detox, heal thyself detox. Is it any different uh, than the work you have in Heal Thyself and the City of Wellness? I said, well, the difference is um, with the, the, the commonality are the formulas that are in all of the works. 
the formulas of that my 21 day kit. All the men on, on this program, this 20 day program, will receive three bottles of their Green Life nutritional formula that will help to build stamina, increase memory, increase vitality, feed the bones that are deficient, that are brittle, and feed the emotions that are in balance so they'll be centered and purify the bloodstream. And then they will receive three bottles for each week of their master herbal formula to detoxify the system, 13 different herbs to detoxify the various addictions, mental, emotional, even relationship addictions that's in the blood. Well, they'll be getting three bottles of their colon ease and one of the herbal laxative to flush out the old waste. For that waste, if it's distended and you have a big belly, that stomach of 10 pounds, 5 pounds of waste is sitting down on your bladder causing bladder malfunction, and then both colon and bladder sits on the prostate causing impotency or uh, enlarged gonads. So that so taking those forms would be of support and then having the rejuvenation clay as a part of the kit for the aches and pains in the body from arthritis or bursitis. You'll also receive in your kit as you take your walk, man, heal thyself, you'll receive your breath of life that if those who have emphysema, or asthma, or allergies, or hay fever, or snoring, um, or headaches, that that formula will help to support you. With that, the difference now, that's what all of my works have, those formulas. But the difference is you will have the chart. And the first um, first week, you'll go through the mind, the scalp and hair, the eyes, the bloodstream, and the bones. The next week, we'll go through the which are zones, four zones, the thyroid, the face, the nervous system, the circulatory system, the back. The next third zone will go through the muscular system and building and the lungs and the heart and the colon. And then the final zone will go and will work on the bladder and the prostate and the kidneys and the liver and the legs and the skin. And when you come out of that, you would have worked on yourself fully. And you would, on a basic level, you would feel... 10 years younger, you'll be able to do the things you could not do for years because the body is always ready to restore itself, to rebuild itself. And this is the work I have been doing with women primarily, only because women come forward more than the men have come forward. But this is a specific call-out to the men. I never felt that I could really do such a call-out. But I remember in the Million Man March, and this, this work is also dedicated to this, that um, there was a conversation that my dear friend um, Diana Farr had with Bob Law where they was at a rally with Minister Farrakhan, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. And um, Diana Farr, um, she's a metaphysician, she went over to Bob Law, um, one of the organizers, and asked him, do you feel it would be advantageous for, the, for Queen of Florida to put the men, the million men, to create a fast for the million men? And he said it would be ideal because he was, because of Bob Law, I wrote the book Heal Thyself, and I'm forever grateful. Um, he forced and pushed me to write that text. And so they both together, um, at the end of the event, they went to speak to our Minister Farrakhan, and he co-signed. He said that he would receive that. Um, it did not happen um, because one sister felt that a medical doctor should present the, the text should present a fast, but they weren't interested and it never showed up. So, But I, I did write it. I did lay it out, three different ways to approach a fast to build up to the million man march so that their frequency would be at such a rate and when they would come together that the accomplishments would be so profound. Because one thing that is in common with all the spiritual houses, and if we want to break whatever that yoke is, that chain is, we must fast and we must pray. We must elevate and we must affirm. And we must see that vision and that will unify us with, and we will find we have more things in common that we do not have in common and that will build us as a whole people and that so it didn't happen then and i say everything is destiny but it's happening now and i just had more time to go within and to focus and so here it is oh that is beautiful i'm glad that you are definitely doing this the brothers need healing and as you said earlier um we're number one with high blood pressure prostate yeah. cancer, and all types of other ailments. Um, can you um, give um, some of the metaphysical causes of disease 
um, in which that you stated earlier, um, why this is occurring. Well, yeah, for one of, uh, yes, one is the heart. When we have a heart attack, my men having heart attacks and strokes and death, if they would trace back in their heart of heart, it is coming from relationships that disappointed them, relationships that didn't work, and sometimes their relationships with their mothers. They'd been, they felt hurt. They didn't get enough touching, enough husking, enough embracing. Maybe relationships with their father. Their father may not have been around, or their father may have been in a home but didn't communicate with them. Um, and so they took those early relationships of what they had or didn't have, and their hearts were not full and blossomed and strong, and they took mates, and they would go into those relationships with all of their lack of information and their imbalances, and they would try to have a relationship, and they would get beat, or they would be abused, or they would be the abuser, or they would beat someone else, or they would curse. Uh, because the heart was hurting. And so metaphysically, it is really the heart needs to be restored. So when one is having a heart attack, it's never just physical. Every disease starts off spiritual and emotional. If not addressed, we then take certain low-frequency foods that reflect the nature of the state of our heart. And those low-frequency foods comes in fried foods and meats and uh, Junk, and that's because of the heart is so full with all of that pain um, and that rage. And our ancestors gave us a symbol for the heart, and it and it and it was a symbol for the whole uh, our entire civilization. And that was my aunt balancing the heart on the scales, that our hearts may become as light as a feather. That sounds like the most incredible thing because once one heart is wounded, they, most people will say, I will never forgive that person for what they did. I will never forgive my wife. I will never forgive her for what she said and what she did. I will never forgive my parents. And that creates a rotten heart, a spoiled heart, a broken heart, a heart that is not pumping fully so you have sh- uh, the, the heart pumps and then it stops. A sudden, you know, th- th- it throbs and then it stops. So sh- you lose a beat because of all the backup, of all the disappointment. So metaphysically, as we begin to go into our inner soul and then go into why am I in this state? Why can I not move my legs? Why am I using this cane? Because maybe you were stunted. Maybe you feel like you can't go any further, that you have been discouraged. Maybe someone said what you were thinking is impossible. You don't have enough wherewithal. You don't have enough money. So you are not inspired to go forward. So the legs begin to break down. And so I go through the various aspects of the, the from vision to arthritis to the numbing. Sometimes things get so deep inside of one's life till you don't want to feel anymore. So some may take drugs not to feel. Some may take alcohol and destroy the liver and their blood and, and, and their families as a result of that. And some will just eat food until they die. They can eat themselves to death. But on their way to death, the numbing starts to take place and the legs start to numb out and the face starts to numb, the lips the left side of the body starts to numb is because of the, so much information of just looking at the news every day. One can feel disempowered. They can feel like, what in, What can I do to make any change? It feels like it's just coming from every direction. And so I say, take this walk. Our ancestors, when I was 16 years old, um, and it was the end of the 60s, I would go to the little shops. They would call them the black shops. And there would always be a picture of Malcolm with his fists up, all power to the people. And my father was a Garveyite, so I was his best student. I had two brothers, but they kind of thought he was ridiculous, and I thought he was a man of wisdom. And so he would always say, you're the one, and I'm going to tell you everything, and I'm going to raise you in my thinking. And so I accepted it, and I followed my father. And um, he's an ancestor, I still follow him. But because of his teachings, I felt so connected to those little black shops. And I would go to an all the time, and I would always hear, the creator has a master plan. 
And I would always just and I would stay on the plan. And I would hear the rest of it, peace and happiness throughout the land. I said, What's the plan? How are we gonna get peace and happiness throughout the land created but one demand, Pharaoh Saunders, peace and happiness throughout the land. And so that prayer was my prayer and I would always do out the healing because I knew my way of helping us was through the healing. Because if one can heal, one would feel their full power. And then one would be able to create massively. And one would be able to attract their economics. And one would be able to go and and do all the things that they came here to do, their, fulfill their purpose here on earth. A broken heart is also a lack of fulfillment of your purpose. If you do not fulfill your purpose, you will have a broken heart. That's right. That's right. Mm. And well, we say, have... how do I fulfill it? First, you have to clean up some of the rage and the hate and the right. anger and, and the that toxins. Comes to prayers, that's been like you were saying conscience. earlier, the positive affirmation, the um, decrees, which that we need to say to mentally change and, and correct our mind state. Then we can get into or putting the proper things into our bodies, but that mind state has to be changed first um, before we can um, make sure that the foods. Um, when they go into the body, they can um, do what they need to do based on the proper design from the mind. I got you. Right. That is excellent. Um, We have a few more minutes before we go. Um, um, Anything else you want to build on before we go? Well, I'll close with this because this opens up the mind in the anatomy of man, and this is Bob Marley's statement to us. Put the music on if you have in your home tonight and dance and celebrate. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None Mm. but yourself can free your mind. Mm. I give thanks and praise for this opportunity to share. And space is not, we're not separated by space. So no one feel, well, they're doing something over there in Harlem. No, I'm doing it over there, and where's your town? Wherever your town may be, I'm there with you. I'm there, you're with me. So let's do this together. Let's all do this together. Let the 19th be on the one. Nine and one, nine and one. Let's make it be on the one. Let's make this a new beginning. We're coming up to 2012. I believe this is part of prophecy. I believe our ancestors gave us a, a plan, a road map. If you can build the women, and we've taken the time for the women, Asin Ebed Head, we opened the way. That is our way. We are to open the way as the primary healers of the home. And the men are to come through now, come through. We'll all be there waiting for you to come through, and we will have love for you as you come through. And even if we're angry black women, we will overcome (laughs) that day, and we will say it's a new day for new beginnings, for a people that deserve this. We are the healers of all humanity. All humanity has pulled from us. And everything that deals with holistic health is all African natural lifestyle. From aromatherapy, it's African natural lifestyle. Reiki, African natural lifestyle. Massage therapy, African natural lifestyle. Reflexology, color therapy, aromatherapy, vegetarian lifestyle, herbology, internal hygiene, colon therapy, yoga, affirmations, incantations, astrology. It all based back to our beginnings as African people. Holistic health is our cultural right. And as we embrace this, and I give this to the men to take it, I'm not trying to lead you. I am sharing with you what I know. Take it and be that leader for yourself and what's your family and wellness. Mm, thank and you, I thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for giving me the opportunity to share. Well, we um, on again. We're definitely going to have one again. Yeah, thank you. Great. First world order radio, final lead. Final lead. We are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about 
what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burr. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burr. State of human concerns and existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Or System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>